Good evening and welcome to Spank Wagon. I'm Murphy. I'm the cheese! And we're here at Yayo Taco for Cheese's stand up. I'm gonna stand up and be telling the jokes. Do, 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 do. Now, <laughs> Cheese's joke telling has kind of evolved. Well, I wouldn't say the joke telling, I'd say the personality he puts on it has evolved a little bit lately. Right? I'm, just, I'm trying, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to step away from the, the, the introverted Cheese and be more extroverted on stage, be more of what you guys are used to. How's that working out? Uh, it's, it's, it's a slow process. Um, hopefully I'll be able to give you guys an example of it tonight. But if I don't go well, if, if I don't start off strong, sometimes I tend to withdraw back into myself. So, we'll see. Now you guys have all seen Jesus stand up. It was on YouTube, it was on Facebook, and a couple of places. So it'll be interesting to see how he's kind of grown as a comic there. Any new jokes for us tonight, I hope? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try, uh, <laughs> again, it'll depend on whether I remember them. But uh, some of my jokes have changed a little bit, and uh, I do have at least one new joke. Completely new that nobody Be Beard prop? Uh, I have, I have new props. I'm not gonna tell you if they're beard props or not. Excellent, excellent. All right, Cheese. So, how can people get a hold of you? Uh, you can find me. Uh, well, you can find me through uh, uh, spankwagon.net or uh, whoasyoushow.com, or you can find me on Facebook. Or I have a Twitter account now, uh, reluctantly, but nonetheless, gotta put myself out there. Uh, also, um, very soon I'll have a. a CharlieTheCheese.com. Uh, excellent. Uh, excellent. That'll have email and all that other stuff. Uh, you can email me at uh, thecheese at spankwagon.net or uh, charlie at whoasyoushow.com. I'll answer either of those. Hey, Cheese, your new website, where is that hosted? Uh, Canis. CanisHosting.com yeah. for all your hosting needs. There you go, Dan. There's your plug. Yeah. Suck it. Yeah, you should hook me up with a deal or something. <laughs> You heard it, Dan. He wants a deal. Hook him up. All right, guys. So we're going to do some support. stuff. Tech support. Tech support. Yeah. Right. We're going to do some stuff. Cheese is going to do his stand-up. We'll have all kinds of stuff for you guys this week on Spank Wagon. Don't know. Good morning. Spank Wagon. Spankwagon.net. Don't net. Don't net. Uh, you know, we decided to do something a little... A little different. Uh, we decided to do a how-to that did not involve alcohol. And it's morning. Really screwed up morning. Anywho, what we're doing is we are going to make this. Now this is a keyblade. And yes, we know some of you are gamers and know exactly what this is and what it does and everything about it. For those of you who don't, go to Wikipedia. Wikipedia! Look up Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts! The decision was made, uh, Murphy behind the camera, which is really odd, he's behind the camera. Well, he wanted to make one for his son. However, he has the uh, mechanical and technical ability of a rodent. If it doesn't have a keyboard and a mouse, I don't do it. Exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and build one for him, uh, actually for his son, uh, for his birthday. So kind of looking at it, it's basic, and if you've ever seen them, uh, there are foam swords that you can go out and buy. Um, Nerf makes some, and I'm sure there's some crap places that make them. Well, I made foam swords in the past, thanks to uh, a friend of mine, Vert, who doesn't watch the show. Vert. Um, What's up, Vert? Come on, Vert. What the hell, man? <sighs> really. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a foam, I guess you can almost call it a LARPing version, of a keyblade. So what I've done already, and I know you can't see this very well on the camera, but I drew out a little plan. Uh, draw out some part numbers and, and exactly what we're going to need. And we're going to head to our, our local Conglomocom hardware store to pick up PVC piping, some duct tape of different colors, some uh, foam insulation wrap, um, and I think I got a PVC, but also joints and some joint compound and stuff like that. And a cup. And a cup. What? Oh dear. We got to test it. Oh god. You're going to need it. No, I'm Chief. building. I'm building. You're testing. Chief. Yeah, we're Chief. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go pick up the parts. We're gonna bring them back here, cut them, measure them. You turn that around. You measure them, then you cut them. <laughs> uh, and build this thing, and hopefully you'll join us as we do that. And if not, um, at least go do something productive. Maybe. Now is the point in Spank Wagon, we'd like you to place bets on which parts of which of us get glued to the other parts of other of us using these compounds that he's speaking about. I'm gluing your mouth shut. I'm gluing your balls to your stomach. I'm glad you think they could reach. 
Oh, they will when I'm done. Oh, God. <laughs> what are they watching, Trent? Oh, uh, well, right now they're going to watch me plumb you with this pink <laughs> keyblade. Uh, you're watching Spankwagon, spankwagon.net. Coffee, bitches? Hey, guys, Murphy from Spankwagon here. Stretcher's on the camera. <laughs> and we're here at Murphy's Law. No, I don't own it, and it's not my old podcast. No, it's a bar here in Vegas. Trencher met a guy by the name of DJ Mateo a couple of weeks ago. Wanted to come down and check him out. So we're here at Murphy's Law. Why don't you guys check him out? So right now we're at Yayo Taco. We've got the uh, trusty Spank, Spank 1. Uh, we're going to be filming cheese. The start time was 8 p.m. It is currently... I know too. Which is two minutes later than the abridged time start. One thing I have learned, stand-up comedians can't tell time. So you're hanging out with Spankwagon. We're having beer. We had beer. That's a shock. Got a taco joint. Now that's a shock. Waiting for cheese. He's a shocker. That's the shocker. <laughs> so uh, stick with us. You're watching uh, Spankwagon, spankwagon.net. Now, as we just mentioned, we are going to be building the Keyblade. So what we did uh, while you guys were watching something else, uh, we went to uh, our local Conglomocom hardware store. Conglomocom. And got uh, asked three times in a row if I wanted to update my kitchen. Spank Kitchen is just fine, thank you. So what we did instead is uh, ask them where something uh, unimportant was, walked the other way, and got the parts ourselves, because that's what you do at Conglomocom. Hooray, so, distractionary techniques. Exactly. So again, remember, we are building this Keyblade, but we are building it so a kid can play with it and beat Murphy over the head with it. <laughs> All right, guys. Woo, what can I say about this next gentleman? This next gentleman is wow. You guys go to enjoy the show. Don't know what he's going to pull out of his hat. But he will be pulling something out of his hat, guys. So uh, give it up for uh, Mr. Charlie Cheese, guys. Come up to the stage. Come on. predict my set is gonna be you played a dirge before it nice hey y'all missed it but apparently here at Yayo Taco they keep their windows really clean after Tech got his food he just came back there and just slammed it in the window <laughs> Shit was funny as fuck <laughs> uh, yeah other people's misery is funny ah uh, I don't really feel like making you guys laugh. I'm gonna try, but it's not gonna have the old college try. Cause, <laughs> fuck it. Uh, here we go, I'm Chow the Cheese, how y'all doing? Woo! I have a beard. Woo! <laughs> uh, I have, before I get started, you guys need to know a couple things about me. Uh, first. I have nothing in any way to do with ZZ Top. I was never in the band. I was never a roadie. I'm not even a sharp dressed man. Another thing is a lot of people mistake me for uh, Rick Rubin. I know y'all don't know who the hell that is, but um, if Rick Rubin was a beer, I would be Rick Rubin light. All the hair, but half the calories. Now, when you go home, Google Rick Rubin and find a picture of him and you'll be sitting at your computer like, oh my God, that joke was so funny. I am such an asshole for not laughing at that. Another thing is I call myself the cheese. I call myself the cheese because I haven't had a date in like three years and the cheese stands the fuck alone. Uh, big problem is um, women won't even talk to me if they're lactose intolerant. <laughs> Thanks for laughing at that. It's not very funny. Um, I always wish I had a fist in my beard so me and Chuck Norris could arm wrestle. One guy has the internet. Uh, 
Some people are afraid of a lot of different stuff, like spiders or snakes. I'm afraid of my chin getting cold. <sighs> what else? Sometimes I get a lot of beard envy. People are really envious of my beard. This one guy actually went so far as to try and stab my beard. A lot of people don't realize there's a neck on the other side of this beard. But it's cool, because God saved me. Those of you not paying attention, I just pulled a fucking Bible out of my beard. That's right. Power of Christ compels you. What else? Uh, you guys are so not worth my time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. Uh, sometimes I have weird dreams. I had a dream once that aliens came down and abducted my beard. So now, I keep it on lockdown. I'm funny as hell. There's like three people in here that are even paying attention. Let me check my shit. Alright. I can never go camping in the summer because it's Sasquatch mating season. I don't drink because I'm real lightweight and I don't like it when my beard gets in the toilet. <laughs> I found out it makes a pretty good tea. Ah, uh, there's the groan I was looking for. School taught me that you don't tell authority figures that you like fire, but also taught me that bullies are flammable. <laughs> Easiest way to teach a white man to dance is to set him on fire. It look like this. <laughs> Thank you. Now we are working with half inch pipe here, so we needed a few parts so we could get this sort of shape here, and something close to this sort of shape here. So to break that down, cross piece, three T's, and six elbow joints. Again, they're all half inch, but let's not just leave it at that. We also want to make this slightly safe. So we have pipe foam, or insulating foam, we also have duct tape, and the duct tape's gonna actually be used to secure the foam and kind of give it a uniform look. We've got red for the handle and silver for the blade. When you are working with PVC pipe, of course you're gonna wanna use cement. So we get the proper cement here. This is the uh, ABS cement, black, medium strength. Another nice tool, and it's a new tool for me, uh, because normally, normally I work with this. I don't wanna work with a hacksaw today. I want to try out one of these. Never used one before. It's a PVC pipe cutter. You open it all the way, you put the blade on your mark, and it ratchets closed. Excellent for bull vasectomies. Excellent for whatever Murphy has in mind. So, we've got our parts. I've got my instruction sheet. Let's start uh, measuring and then cutting. Oh, and let's not forget, if you're already measure, you need your tape measure, and a working permanent marker. So uh, let's get started. All right, so as I mentioned, you always want to measure and then cut. And a lot of you are thinking, hey, why not just jump right on in? Well, with something like this, because there are lots of different cuts and lots of different joints that we've got to put together, you're going to want to keep it as even as possible. And the best way to do that, of course, is to measure twice, cut once. You really want it to look good, you put a little bit more effort into it. If you want it to look crappy, Hey, it's your job. You can make it look crappy all you want. Hey, Trench, another way to make it crappy? Yes, sir. Let Murphy do it. Exactly. What piece are you measuring there, Trench? I'm measuring the main blade out first, mm -hmm. just so that way I can get that cut separated, because all my other cuts are going to be smaller cuts. So let's get the big part taken care of first, put it out of the way, and then work on the more minor, finer details. 
Are you doing exactly the same size as you would as the uh, for the full size blade? Um, I'm going to try to get as close as possible uh, because I, I didn't actually take the time, and this is where I'm being uh, lazy, I didn't take the time to measure the depth uh, that the actual joints will slide in. So not until I get to the little pieces. It's getting a little stormy. So why don't we go and bring the camera in? No, let's leave it out here. No. This is going to be funny. <laughs> Anyone want to watch Trencher have an aneurysm live on film? Yeah. What is this? I don't know. Why is there water falling from the sky? This isn't right. This, this, it's wet. It's cold. It's cold. Ugh. Okay, here's the thing. Lightning. It doesn't rain in Vegas that often. So when it does, you kind of want to play in it. You want to play? Come on, Murph, you got the camera. You got the storms coming in from up there. Wow. Oh, here it comes, dude. Here it comes. Here it comes. You guys hear us talk about the Murph mobile a lot, the Rape mobile, um, because it does interesting things. One of the really neat things about my truck is if you're sitting inside, you hear something. That is a salad bowl. It's actually a stainless steel mixing bowl on top of my roof because this truck used to have a microwave mast going through it. I bought it at the auction save a bunch of money all I had to do was epoxy a mixing bowl on my roof and fix a, a hole in the floor and add a back seat my kids love it but every time it rains my kids love it because they get to hear it ping 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 off the top because there's no insulation in there holy cow it's right there so, these, so here's the cool thing about living in this part of Vegas these southern monsoonal flows come up from California and Mexico and they come off of this really nice warm wind and where I live I get to catch it as it comes over the mountains where it gets cold. Oh, oh that's nice. Getting a little wet there in my MC Chris shirt. Oh yeah the storm is literally right there. Not a lot of aqua function but still it's nice. Well, that's Vegas for you. It rains for about two, three minutes and it stops. It looks like we're we're slowly kind of easing off here. We may get another punch, but oh wow! There is that awesome thunder and lightning I was telling you about. This is best as we get for storm chasing, standing in our yard and watching it pass overhead. The storm seems to be really low, so it's probably only gonna last maybe 20, 30 minutes if we're lucky, but, oh, oh, here comes those big rocks. Oh, oh nice. Hey, Mark, we're 33 and 34 years old, standing outside in the rain. It's awesome. <laughs> All right, let's get back to work. All right, everybody, Trencher here, Spankwagon, spankwagon.net. 
And there's something with, with Murphy on the camera now, I gotta say is, thank you for teaching me how to properly damage my liver. You see, it allows me to go to bars and hang out and meet interesting people. Of those interesting people, we have Jessica, who works at the Crown and Anchor. We'll talk more about that later. Thank you. She introduced me to a DJ by the name of DJ Mateo, or more appropriately, New York's own DJ Mateo. How's it going? Man? How are you? How's uh, everything? Uh, great. Very good. Now, very good. New York's own DJ Mateo. Yes. How many years DJ? 21. 21 years. Yes. Strictly out of New York City? Straight out of New York. I've been around the world. I've been to Italy, Ireland, the UK. I've been all the way from New York City to Hawaii, Canada, to Texas and back. Now I'm noticing right now, we're we're nerds, so we're gonna talk a little bit about sure. the equipment. Absolutely. What do you run for equipment when you DJ? Well, tonight when I'm running at Murphy's Law, I usually only run Technique 1200 turntables because I'm at a bar. Right. It's a little more appropriate to use CDs. You get more music on the CD than vinyl, obviously. Right. So at a bar like this, we're gonna run just straight Denons um, and a Behringer mixer. The difference between the Behringer mixer and the Pioneer mixer is nothing, except about eighteen hundred dollars. Yes. It's the same mixer, the same effects, but for a bar like this, there's no there's no reason to bring out a two thousand dollar mixer when you can bring out the same mixer that does the same effects, the same mixes, and all the tricks I need to do as an entertaining DJ. So I bring out this mixer, it does the same thing. It's just a little cost, a little cost better for a place like this. Makes sense. Yeah. Plus, if something happens because of you know, which it or, can happen. It does, yeah. and it will. <laughs> Oh, ooh, a little hail in there too, I think. Yeah, I think I felt that. Yeah, there's a, there's a little hail. Oh, wow. <laughs> We're both pretty much drenched. Uh, it's the only way to be, man. <laughs> oh. You know what, like you said, 33, 34, who cares? Oh, you can see, oh, look at those, the just waves. the waves of the water going across the concrete. And you know, there's professional storm chasers. They see this and they have a reason and they have their things they're looking for, but when you live in Vegas in the desert, you... oh, come here, Mark, come here. Time lapse, watch us dry out. <laughs> oh, we got one right there. Oh. Just, the, just the waves of rain in the street. Hey. Hey, Mark. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to get a lightning. <laughs> Although I'm standing between a truck with a big metal rack. And a tree! <laughs> Look at this giggle. Oh, wow. Oh, wow! I really hope the back door's open. <laughs> Good I think Brazilian dance fighting is awesome, but it got me thinking, well, if there were other styles of dance fighting, like ballroom dance fighting, or raver dance fighting, or even swing dance fighting. Swing dance fighting would be awesome, because you could use another person as a weapon. It'd be the only fighting style where you could actually bitch slap a bitch with another bitch. <laughs> I worked hard on that joke. <laughs> Check my notes, because I'm professional. Oh yeah, I'm gonna tell that joke. Since I don't really seem to have you guys, I'm gonna tell some of my messed up jokes. You think that if a crackhead, damn, I messed that joke up already. I suck. Hello? No problem. Think of a cannibal ate a crackhead, he will get addicted to crack or crackheads. Be like, come on, man, just a knuckle. Come on, just a knuckle, man, just a finger. Come on, I'll suck your dick. <laughs> I stopped playing video games because I got tired of having something to do. 
I love the old school video games though. They had uh, Fester's Quest. Y'all don't know about Fester's Quest. Aliens came down and invaded the earth, and our only hope was Uncle Fester from the fucking Adams family. He went up to his uh, attic and pulled out his, his musket, and he was our only hope for mankind. But that wasn't a joke, I just, I'm reminiscing. Y'all don't know about Faxanadu either. The elves were having a problem, and our only hope in that game was Naked Bearded Guy. He didn't even have a name. I'm a beanie and a duct tape patch jacket away from being a homeless person. But if I was a homeless person, I'd get a whole bunch of cardboard boxes and dress myself up like a robot. And I'd be big or the bum bot. And I'd win all my knife fights with my laser vision. And my sign would say 11010010111110000001. That'd just be the first couple letters. Not right. Hang on. I'm gonna make some notes. I'm both English and German, so bombing on stage is kind of like a sick fantasy for me. <laughs> Only a couple people got that, all right. I'm, um, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a VW bus and some hemp clothing away from being a hippie. But if I was a hippie, I would kill myself, because I hate hippies. But my suicide note would say one one zero one zero 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 one zero one zero one 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 zero. I'll just tell one more, and I'll let you guys get back to your food or a funny comedian or something. Growing up, I always wanted to be a paramedic because paramedics get to watch people die without having to kill them. <laughs> but it's cool because they get to revive them and then watch him die again. I told that joke once and there was a pet American in the audience and he laughed, so all of you should be laughing. And then he blew up a glove and made a penis out of it. Thank you very much, I'm Charlie the Cheese. Woo! Did you see those idiots out in the rain? Ugh. So while those morons were out in the rain, I was sitting here busy cutting away. Remember, you do your measurements and you get nice even cut parts. So we've got all the different parts for the sword or the keyblade and first thing you're going to want to do is so I'll cut out and again you can cut to your specifications I'm not going to share the measurements maybe Murph might throw something up I don't know but what you're going to want to do is do a nice simple dry fitting you don't need to jam every piece together just make sure you have all your parts together and it looks good so that's what we're going to do right now something I noticed when I was doing the dry fitting was that if I actually used the measurements I originally had it's going to be too big. So what I'm going to do, and one benefit of always measuring, is I get the nice luxury of actually trimming down so it works a little bit better for what we're building. So let me go ahead and do that now. Remember, you are just doing a dry fitting, so they will have to fit, and they'll have to be fairly close, but nothing has to be absolutely perfect. For example, I almost made it backwards. So what are you working on now, Mark? Well, I did some cutting. I've got to do some more remeasuring uh, to trim pieces down, because when you make one modification, of course, it's going to affect other modifications. So right now I'm still doing dry fitting just to make sure that the most important part in this case, the handle, is going to work. Now I'm also going to backpedal from what I said previously. I'm going to start putting things together in their nearly completed form. No glue yet. None of this yet. So we're going to go ahead and just try to fit it all together, figure out where my measurements need to be modified, and then go from there. Alright, 
So you've done digital, you've done analog, you've been all over the world. Absolutely. The best place to make? New York City. New York City. Your home. Yes. Your home. What brings you to the desert? What said Vegas needs New York's own DJ Mateo? I've been everywhere, like I said. I've been to Italy four, three times. I've been to the UK four times. I've DJed in all local clubs three times. Wow. I've been to Ireland three times, uh, excuse me, twice. And no matter where I went, all the way to Hawaii, all the way to Canada, down to Toronto, to Texas, to the littlest bar in Texas, to the biggest nightclub in St. Louis, Missouri. Wow. It which is still the littlest out, bar in Texas. Which is the littlest bar, but you know what? New York City has what we're, we're famous for our nightlife. Just like Vegas is famous for their nightlife. The reason why I came to Vegas is because I've been DJing so many years and I've flown over Vegas. I've even drove through Vegas. I never stopped to DJ in Vegas. This is one of the one of three cities I've never DJed in. Now that you're here, and, and we're here at Murphy's Law. Correct. Which, which resort do you want to take residency at? What resort if, if, I had, if I had my choice, it would be MGM. Why? I have a friend there. Okay. Uh, DJ Scam Scribble. Nope. Scott Scribble yeah. from MTV, Daytona Spring Break. Yep. We grew up on the same block together. Really? We grew up our whole life together. He's a very good friend of mine. And um, he's currently doing the freak show at Studio 54. Okay. Um, and that's the billboard you see all over Tropic Canada. Um, the energy that MGM gives off happens to be very similar to New York City. Okay. You're talking on a Saturday night from 10 o'clock Saturday night till 5 a.m. Uh, you know, technically Sunday morning. In that time span, you're talking 16,000 people on a dance floor. How many? How many people have you entertained at one single event or one single night? 87,000 Madison Square Garden. You played Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden. What was that like? Now that's now that's live. Um, that's live for a nightclub. Okay. The biggest show I've done is every year up until this year because I've been in Vegas. Um, every year from 2002 to 2009, I am a Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. If you wake up Thanksgiving morning and you turn on your TV, you see the Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York City. I'm Macy's DJ. There's an awning and I'm the DJ. Also, um, the, the national worldwide with New York City Puerto Rican Day Parade. Okay. Um, I'm Tito Puente Jr., Mark Anthony, and Jennifer Lopez as DJ. They're all three of them on one float. And I'm the DJ for that. Now, that counts, people wise, is a little over 450,000 people at the parade. At the parade. And then you're talking between six and nine million worldwide that watch on TV. So, as far as, as my biggest show, my biggest show would obviously have to be the National Puerto Rican Day Parade for Tito Puente Jr., Mark Anthony, Jerome Lopez, along with the Macy's Thanksgiving Morning Day Parade. So, let's ask this question. We know what's the biggest when you're at home. What's the biggest sponsor? What's the biggest country that says, you're New York's own DJ Mateo? What's that one country? There's got to be one place that just locked into you. Florida. Florida. Florida of all places. Geriatric motherfuckers. Yeah. It was uh, uh, two places, for the, actually, to be honest with you, it was two places, which was in Tampa Tampa Bay, you had Ybor City. Okay. If you're, nobody's familiar with Ybor City, Ybor City in Tampa is Mardi Gras in Tampa. Okay. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Oh, fuck. All year round. It's a mile-long strip of nightclubs, gentlemen's clubs, female, female That's clubs. That's titty bars for everybody. That, that was titty clubs, but also for the females, gentlemen with the, you know, clubs. Uh, you know, gentlemen clubs, female gentlemen clubs. Gentlemen clubs, got it. You know, um, and it's it's a mile long strip, and all the nightclubs have their speakers in the windows hanging out onto the street. All right. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And it's basically Mardi Gras in Tampa and Miami. I am the Hilton, the, the Hilton in Miami Beach. I'm the Hilton's DJ for the With the Music Conference. All right. So uh, most East Coast people know about the, the WMC, With the Music Conference. Some West Coast people do know about it, but it's more of an East Coast thing. Um, and basically what happens is once a year in uh, spring, summer, uh, all of New York City that listens to house music, club music, yeah. Jungle Tribal heads to Miami for one week. And it's basically... Uh, so it's the American Ibiza. It's exactly what it is. Okay. It's Ibiza in, in Miami. In Miami. Exactly to the T, it's Ibiza in Miami. So the best words I've heard on an interview yet, to be honest with you. So, best words. Thank you. So we talked a little bit about present. 
tomorrow, future? Uh, soon. Not yet, but soon I'm going to be heading off to Colorado. Okay. Um, Vail, Colorado. Very well-known ski resort. Yep. Vail, Colorado. Uh, will be uh, upcoming and hiring me for their three days on the radio, three days live at the ski resorts. Um, the contract's not signed yet. Okay. But it's in the process. When that happens, we'll probably look at something around uh, January, February. Right. Um, and it's basically going to be when you're not skiing at night, you want to have the nightlife at the resort. Exactly. And that's me. Going to cause an avalanche? It might. It might. You never Is know. that a goal? That Make that a goal. You know. We want to hear about an avalanche, and we'll talk about it on the wagon. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to wrap this up. Trencher with New York City's own DJ Mateo. Big thank you to uh, Jessica for introducing, and um, may, may I real quick? Yes. Just first of all, it's not just the great, it is my soon-to-be wife, Jessica. <laughs> and now she's like, damn, back on camera. Absolutely. <laughs> Fought to get her to do this. All right, so why don't you go ahead and um, get this shit out. Hey, Mark, why don't you tell me what's so awesome about dry fitting everything? Well, <sighs> bad joke. The awesome part about dry fitting <clears throat> is you put it all together and it looks good, and then you got to take it apart to glue it. Well, unfortunately, uh, the power of Christ is holding this shit together. Uh, uh, just become a heretic and shit just falls apart. <laughs> so where did I put my pliers? So we're just going to take everything apart. And in doing so... Shit, I may actually be permanently in there. We'll work on that in a minute. So show us how all this stuff fits back together, Marty. All right. Something's missing. No, oh, the left turn glide. That's in. Uh, so we're just gonna maybe dab some cement around it. Left turn glide. So that's how it all lays out. That's how it in essence is gonna lay out. So we've got one, two, three, four elbows, a T across piece, three bars across the middle, and one, two, three, four tiny little shit pieces. And that's just the handle. Yeah. Then we have this part of it, which is going to be the teeth. And there's your teeth, and of course, your blade. So now we've got it all worked out. Here it is, it's laid out, except for this evil part. All right, so let's glue this stuff together. Now, please be careful, and always, I, I know they say this and you think, oh, whatever, I can take it. No, use in a well-ventilated area. We are dealing with chemicals on chemicals on chemicals. Hmm. Chemicals.
Yes, I can see ya. Cause every girl here wanna be ya. Just repeat these process, this process as you assemble everything. Now, do you always put it on the inside, or do you put it on the outside ever? Yes. But just enough. Mmm, smells wonderful. Mmm, doesn't it though? Smells like shop class. Is that closer than it was when you were dry fitting it? Absolutely. Oh, okay. But it still should fit. What do I want to do inside first? Not only is it glue, but it's lube. Glube? Glube. It's a glubricant. That's like saying it's a heat solvent. <laughs> How you guys doing? It's your boy, New York City's own DJ Mateo. We're here in Las Vegas live at the one and only world famous Murphy's Law. They've been open for one year to the day. We're celebrating one year at Murphy's Law. We're gonna bring you inside right now. We're gonna show you around, show you how everything goes in this bar. Every Friday night I'm here spinning the hottest house music Las Vegas has to offer. So we're gonna keep the party rolling for you. We're gonna step on inside right now. Enjoy the tour. First come in Murphy's Law, obviously you have a little corridor here where it's a very famous sports bar here. So of course we have all the sports memorabilia and as far as last Friday, we had the world famous old school New York Giants coach, Jim Fazell, here. He was here signing autographs, hanging out and just hanging with the guys watching a football game. So we're going to bring you through the bar right now. We're going to introduce you to some of the staff here tonight and also we're going to show you what Murphy's Law has to offer. So follow me, let's go this way guys. Here tonight at Murphy's Law, every Friday night, it's DJ Mateo, I step out onto the patio, we play the music outside, bringing the people inside from outside to get them here. Come spend a little money at the bar, gaming is where it's all about in Las Vegas. Those video poker machines is how the party always happens here. People come in, they buy plenty of drinks, they buy the best food in town, and they get to play the funniest and the best poker games Vegas has to offer. So tonight, obviously, we have your bar right here. And it starts all the way from the right, right here, and it's all the way to the left. Your bartender here tonight, that is Jeff. Jeff, let's give him a little wave out here. That's your bartender, Jeff. He's also the assistant manager here as well. This gentleman right here to the left of me, Ron, if you don't mind for one sec, this is the gentleman tonight, that is the owner, Ron. He's here, he provides all the fun and games here tonight at Murphy's Law every day, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. So we're gonna step on this way right now. Guys, this is the middle corridor right here. It kind of looks like a brick oven pizza. Sometimes when we DJ inside, we set up in the corner over here. Otherwise, it's just a whole lot of fun outside Las Vegas style. We're going to step over here right now, guys. This is the rest of the bar. This bar has 37 42-inch plasma TVs for every football game, every sports game that Las Vegas can watch and has to offer. So over this way, of course, this is the corridor. This is where people come and relax, like these two fine people right here. Sorry about the camera, guys. <laughs> this is where people come and sit and relax and just want to have a drink and spend time with some of their friends and family and enjoy without having music too loud in their ears outside when I'm playing. So what we're going to do tonight is we're also going to step back this way a little bit and we're going to introduce you to a few more people here tonight. Of course, the lovely Jessica. And the rest of your bartenders here tonight. Guys, come on down every Friday night. Murphy's Law, it's where the party's happening. 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. Come on down, listen to the classic oldies, classic disco, house 80s, 90s, and today. And of course, wait, wait, tell the camera, tell them. Yeah, dude, uh, like if you come here Monday, all you can drink Bud Light. 
and uh, you enter your name and you win shirts, man. I want two weeks in a row. Just for that, I might get you a shirt on the off. That's right. badass. Let me see if I can pull some shit. I want a Bears Ravens. You know? There you go. Actually, Woo! about two weeks ago for the halfway to St. Patty's Day party, they gave away a mountain bike courtesy of BMX and Murphy's Law. So there's always fun going on. There's yeah, you guys came on the wrong on. night, dude. It's usually good. <laughs> Monday night's the night to come, bro. Monday night is... is Badass. So Monday nights, Friday nights when I'm DJing here on Friday nights on the patio. Last and Monday also night. Monday nights is the place. I swear to God, dude, they had karaoke. It was like a hundred Asian bitches walked in here. They came up with a fucking bus, dude. I swear See, there you go. God, dude. Asian girls is where the spot is. Murphy's Law. There's like a hundred of them dancing around all night long. There like, you go. Well, that's what they look like. We're gonna get back outside now. We're gonna bring you back to me, spinning some more music for you. Enjoy. <laughs> Glue one, two, and put one, two, and three, and then bang them. Mm This week on this old Keyblade. One Keyblade handle. Nice. Now, are we going to put the whole thing together before we foam and tape it? We have to, and we're going to have to let this dry about a day. Oh, okay. But it just means I have to come over again tomorrow. You sure we can't let it wrap under the foam? Yeah, I don't want to do that. I want to let this one dry. We didn't let the last one dry. First one we built? Yeah. So you've glued the tooth into the top of the blade, and now you're gluing the bottom of the blade into the handle, correct? Oh, did I get it upside down? <laughs> yep, and uh, going ahead, and that should be my final glue for today. Tweak just a little There you go. A keyblade. Glue in my hands. Probably won't come off for a little month. Hey, Mark. Yes, sir. Does that mean tomorrow I'm going to take you to the hospital because you've glued your hands to your penis? Oh, that's not a concern. Nothing touches that. Am I going to have to take you to the hospital tomorrow because you've glued your hand to the underside of your nutsack? Again, nothing. Never mind. We're going to go there. So, Am what I going to have to take you to the hospital because you've glued your finger inside your asshole? You're going to have to take me to the hospital because... No, no, it's taking you to the hospital. Hey, I am. <laughs> tired. Um, so at this point, we're going to let it dry for uh, 24 hours. We're going to let it cure, which is going to mean a bonding process between the two different pieces of PVC piping mm -hmm. uh, and the glue. Once it's cured and it's dried and everything is in place and looking good, uh, then we'll work on a really hard part, and that's going to be insulating this. So that way we can beat people over the head with it. And then uh, we will be taping the insulation with the duct tape because the duct tape will give it some color codedness and you know just kind of make it look kind of fun. Color codedness? Color coated, coating, coated. Yes. Hey, hey, Mark, can I make you feel special about yourself for just a minute? Yeah. Here, watch. Let's let's just take this. Okay. So the reason that it looks different now is we turned on the underwater mode on the camera. Alright. I give you run off. 
the underside. It's not 10 seconds, it's 10 feet, Mark. 10 feet for up to 9.8 seconds. Oh, well, still, I read the book. <laughs> Hey Mark. Yes, sir. Why aren't we filming right now? Because <laughs> I'm on Facebook. <laughs>